Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you today, and I've just got to say, this is my favorite time of year. In fact, you could say it's the most wonderful time of the year, with the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And you know why? Because it's December, and you know what that means. That's right, it's Christmas. I just love Christmas. And since it's the first Sunday of a new month, today's also a day to check out our brand new virtue. Here it is. This month, it's all about compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. And you know what? I see a need right now. You know what I see? I see a group of kids who need to have a little fun. So how about we play a Christmas game? Let's see how many Christmas words you can guess from the picture puzzles. Are you ready? Let's go. That was awesome. Okay, as I'm sure you're aware, we're about to celebrate Christmas, and though it's hard to get past all the hype, Christmas isn't really about tinsel or stockings or even Christmas trees. Christmas is really about seeing a need and someone caring enough to do something about it. You see, over 2,000 years ago, God looked down on the world that he had created and saw that it was broken. He saw that we needed something. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you will be familiar with our lesson today, so I may need a little help getting everything straight. But in case you don't know today's lesson and you want to read about it for yourself, you can find it in the Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. A long time ago in the town of Nazareth, there was a young girl named Mary. Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. Everything was going pretty well in Mary's world until one day when Mary received a very important message. This message didn't come in a telegram, over the telephone, or even in a text message. In fact, this message was so important that it had to be delivered in person. This message was not delivered by a person at all, but by an angel. Maybe it looks something like this. Hear ye, hear ye, lords and lasses, lend me your ear. Young lass by the name of Mary, I implore you to heed my words. The Lord, maker of heaven and earth, and all ye see, the Lord himself is with thee. Wait, that doesn't seem quite right. Somehow I don't think the angel that visited Mary spoke kind of like a character from a Shakespeare play and it probably wasn't a calm and sedate environment. Mary was very confused. Maybe
maybe even afraid. I mean, wouldn't you guys be afraid if suddenly an angel appeared in front of you? What if it looked like this? Well, hello there, little lady. I got a message for you. There's no need to be scared. You're going to have a son. And you're going to name this little feller Jesus. And this Jesus won't be just any baby. No siree. This little guy will one day rule this town. Okay, so maybe the angel Gabriel didn't look like a character from a John Wayne movie, but did you catch the message? Here's this young girl, not even married yet, and the angel Gabriel told her something amazing. She's going to have a baby, a son, and not just any baby. This would be a very special child. Jesus was to be a ruler who would reign forever and ever. As you can probably imagine, Mary was very confused. How could this be? And why would God choose her for such an important task? She was young and not even married yet. So Gabriel went on to explain. Oh my! Why are you so frightened, Mary? Don't be afraid. It's quite simple, really. Jesus will be called the Son of God. You remember how no one believed that your cousin Elizabeth would have had a baby, right? But she did have a baby. Remember, impossible things are not impossible with God. Okay, okay, I know you guys are way smarter than that. There is no way the angel Gabriel appeared like a fairy from a princess movie. In fact, we know from the Bible that angels looked pretty much like ordinary men. I think God sent Gabriel to Mary so that she would believe that it was true. God really had chosen her to be the mother of the Savior of the whole world. And in response, Mary told the angel that she was willing to follow God's plan. Even though she couldn't see exactly how it would all work out, she agreed to follow God's plan by saying, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said. You see, God was setting the most amazing plan in motion. God looked at the world and saw that we had a need. He loved us so much that he sent his only son into this world. And when we believe that Jesus came to take the punishment for our sin, and we ask him to forgive us and to be our savior, then we will have eternal life forever with him. God loved. God gave. We believe in him. And then we receive life forever with our Heavenly Father. God saw our greatest need. Whose needs do you see? Look at the needs of people around you. Maybe your friend is discouraged because of a tough situation at home. Maybe there's a family in need who lost their home to a fire or a bad storm. The first part is seeing the need and making yourself aware. Then you can act on what you see by writing a friend a note or inviting him to your house or donating clothes or games to people who need them. But before you can do that, you have to see the needs of others. And seeing someone else's need is always a wise choice. Do you remember where we find out how to make the wise choice? That's right, the Bible. The Bible is like a mirror. A mirror shows you things about yourself that need to change. The Bible helps you see the things on the inside that need to change, like selfish attitudes. See, it's easy to think about all the things that we need, but when you start to look at what other people need, just like God did, then you'll be less selfish. God saw our greatest need. So the question is, whose needs do you see? Why don't we pray and ask God to help us with that? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for seeing our greatest need and for sending your one and only son to save us. Thank you for loving us that much. Help us to look out for others in need instead of just focusing on ourselves. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now take a few moments to talk about these questions with whoever is watching with you today. I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson and look forward to seeing you soon. 
Have a great week.